اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم جز نمبر 3 ورڈ انالیسس ورس نمبر 253 آف سورت البقر ورڈ انالیسس بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم تلک دیٹ الرسل دی میسنجرز These are the messengers or those messengers. Tilka is ism ishara, a noun that is used to point towards things. Just as we have read the words thalika, ulaika, hadha, hadihi. And tilka is the feminine of thalika. Like we read at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, thalika al-kitabu. So tilka is feminine of thalika. And remember that thalika and tilka They are used to point towards something that is far Because ism ishara is of two types To point towards something that is near And secondly to point towards something that is far Qareeb and ba'id Like in English we have here And we have there We have this and we have that So similarly in Arabic We have hadha and thalika And whenever ism ishara ba'id The ism ishara which is used to point towards something that is far Like over here tilka When it is used, it is used for one of the three reasons you can say First of all, literally that thing is far Physically that thing is far That's one of the reasons Secondly, it is also to show the high status of something Why not use this? Even if that thing be close, why use that? To show the high status that that thing has that you're pointing towards And thirdly, other times it is also used to show the very low status that one has. Something that is so far, something that is so low, that, so far away. So what are the three reasons? Literally, it is far. Secondly, to show the high status. And thirdly, to show the low status. Alright? So over here, tilka, far is being used Who is this pointing towards? A rusul, the messengers. Why is far being used? To show their high status. To show their high status. And a rusul is the plural of rasul. Rasul means messenger. Now you may wonder, why is the feminine being used? Why is the feminine form being used? Messengers were men. Hmm? Messengers were men. How come we're using the feminine gender to point towards them? There is a rule in the Arabic language that plural nouns, there are two types of plural nouns. First of all, we have sound plural. Sound plural is, like for example, we have mu'min. What's the plural of that? Mu'minun or mu'minin. Similarly, we have Muslim. What's the plural of that? Muslimun or muslimin. So, sound plurals are Just those plurals in which what you do is that you add the waw noon or the ya noon at the end of the singular word. Simply what do you do? You remove the waw noon or the ya noon. The singular form remains the same. What do you have to make the plural? Just add the waw noon. Like in English, for plurals what do we do? Just add an s. That makes it a plural form. But there are other kinds of plurals as well. And they are called jam mukassaf. The broken plural In which what happens is That the original singular word Does not remain the same Okay If you look at the word Rasul Singular What's the plural of the word Rasul Is it Rasuluna No Is it Rasulina No it's not What does the word become into Rasul The actual word is Ra, Seen, Waw, Lam And in the plural Do you see the Waw anymore No you don't So the actual singular word, what happens to it? It breaks down. It does not remain the same. So for such nouns, such broken plurals, if you have to refer to them, you will use the feminine gender. This is the rule in the Arabic language. To refer to the broken plural, what gender are you going to use? You are going to use the feminine gender. So a rusul is a broken plural. It's a broken plural. So what noun are you going to use? What gender is it going to be? Feminine. So 
instead of thalika what do you have tilka tilka rusul those are the messengers so you understand why tilka is being used because we're referring to a broken plural so tilka rusul those are the messengers these are the messengers which messengers how come we're beginning the ayah with this in the previous ayah what was mentioned wa innaka laminal mursalin that indeed you are of the messengers then allah says these messengers those messengers of high status what about them faddalna we have preferred we have favored faddalna faddala from the root fa dad lam fadl what does fadl mean extra to give someone that which is extra basically fadl is an ihsan a favor that is done to someone and obviously a favor is more than what the other person actually deserves so he doesn't necessarily deserve this but you give it as a favor to them okay you give it as a favor to them you give them something extra as a favor so faddala yufaddilu tafdil is to prefer one over the other to give one a favor that you do not give to the other to give one preference over the other some extra thing that you do not give to the other so allah says these are the messengers what about them faddalna we have preferred ba'dhum some of them meaning some of the messengers we have preferred them ala upon ba'dhin others some messengers were preferred over other messengers how that some were given some special traits that were not given to the other messengers the examples are given over here allah says min hum from them meaning from the messengers among the messengers there are some who man who kallama he spoke allahu allah some allah spoke to directly and all the messengers allah did not speak to directly so when allah spoke to someone directly what happens This is tafdil this is preference that they have over the other messengers The word kallama is from kaf lam mim taklim which means to speak and the word kalam is generally used for brief speech speech that is not too long it's short which is why the kalima kalima is used for what the kalima shahada it's a very short statement just two sentences very short la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah very short secondly the word kalam is also used for speech that may be one sided not for dialogue not for conversation but for one sided speech so from among the messengers there are some whom kallam allah allah spoke to like for example adam alayhi salam musa alayhi salam muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam allah spoke to them directly wa and rafa he raised ba'dhum some of them meaning some of the messengers allah raised them allah elevated them elevated them in what darajat in degrees in ranks darajat is the plural of daraja the singular form of darajat is daraja and daraja is from the root dal ra ji and daraja is used for a rank a status a position there are many darajat in everything there are many ranks there are many positions so warafa ba'dhum darajat allah raised some of them in degrees which degrees the degrees of dunya and the hereafter some of them will be above others some messengers will be above other messengers in their degrees wa atayna and we gave we gave to who isa isa alayhi salam Who is Isa alayhi salam? He is Ibn son Maryam of Maryam. He is the son of Maryam, not the son of Allah. You will notice that almost every time when Isa alayhi salam is referred to in the Quran, Ibn Maryam comes with him. Why? To emphasize that he is the son of a human being, of Maryam. He only had a mother, not a father, and he is not the son of Allah. 
So Ataina Isa ibn Maryam, we gave Isa ibn Maryam, what did we give him? Al Bayinat, the clear proofs. Al Bayinat is the plural of Bayina. And Bayina, as you know, is used for a clear sign, a clear proof. So we gave Isa alayhi salam clear proofs. What are these clear proofs? The clear proofs refers to two things. First of all, it refers to Injil. It refers to the book that he was given, Injil. And secondly, the clear proofs also refers to the miracles that Isa alayhi salam was given. The miracles, like for example, curing the blind, bringing the dead to life, making a bird and blowing ruh into it by the permission of Allah. So such clear proofs, they were what? They were miracles. Allah said, we gave Isa salam the clear proofs. Moreover, wa and ayyadnahu, we aided him, we supported him. Supported who? Ayyadnahu, who refers to Isa salam. And ayyada is from the root hamza ya dal, aid. Aid means to be strong. And ayyada is to help someone in order to give strength to them. To help someone so that you can make them strong. So, ayyadnahu, we helped him, we aided him, we strengthened Isa alayhi salam. How? Biruhi, with ruh. Which ruh? Al-Qudus, the pure. Ruh is from the root ra, wa, ha. Ruh al-Qudus, we have discussed this earlier. Just a quick recap. And the word ruh is used in the Quran for Jibreel alayhi salam. And secondly, the word ruh is also used for wahi in the Quran. It is also used for revelation. And thirdly, it is also used for soul. Soul. Nafs. Yes, aluna ka ali ruh. They ask you about the soul, about the spirit. So, ayyadnahu biruh al qudus. Al qudus from the root qaf dal sin. And qudus means that which is pure. Qaf dal sin gives the meaning of to be far. So, one who is far from bad. One who is pure and who is far from bad. Why is Jibreel called Ruh al Qudus? Why is he called Ruh al Qudus? Because first of all, he is pure. He obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does not disobey him. So this is why he's called the pure spirit. He's a pure being, a pure one, one who does not sin. Secondly, he is also called Ruh al Qudus because he brought that through which purification was done or through which purification is done because Qudus to be far to be far from bad and remember the meaning of Taqdis وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ to purify as well Taqdis is also to purify so Jibreel is called Ruh Al-Qudus because he brought that through which people could purify themselves Jibreel brought the Qur'an to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and through the Qur'an we purify ourselves. So, أَيَّدْنَاهُ بِرُوحِ Qudus, We supported Isa alayhi through Jibreel. How did we support him? Jibreel was always there to accompany him and assist him wherever needed. He gave him strength. وَلَوْ and if شَاءَ اللَّهُ Allah willed If Allah willed مَا not اِقْتَتَلَ He fought. اِقْتَتَلَ is from the root Ta, ta, lam. How come there are two ta? Obviously, the extra ta is adding some more meaning. Isn't it so? So, iqtatala, qatal means to kill. Iqtatala is to fight with each other. To combat one another. What is iqtital? To fight with each other. To combat one another. And it's also used for to plan and try to kill someone. Not just randomly go and kill someone, not just randomly go and murder someone, but iqtatala is to make a whole plan to kill someone and then kill them. Like they're planned murders, they're planned killings. What do people do? They make a whole plan, we'll trap the person like this, kill him like this and this and that. So it's a whole plan that a person makes in order to kill someone. This is what iqtatala means. To intend and plan to kill someone. So, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ If Allah willed, مَقْتَتَلَ He did not fight. He did not kill. Who? الَّذِينَ Those people who? Min from بَعْدِهِمْ After them. After who? 
after the messengers. After the messengers, how come the people fought one another? How come the people killed one another? And this killing is in result of their differences. Iqtatala over here gives the meaning of they would not have had such severe differences, they would go on killing one another. Okay? So how come people had such differences after the messengers that they went to the extent of killing each other? Min from Bardi after Ma that Ja'atum it came to them. It came to who? Them refers to the people after the messengers. What came to them? Al Bayinatu the clear proofs. They had the clear proofs. They had the revelation. They saw the miracles. How come after the messengers people opposed each other so much that they killed? Allah says, Walakin but ikhtalafu they differed. Ikhtalafu from the root khalanfa ikhtilaf. Ikhtilaf is to be at variance, to not agree with each other, to disagree. So but ikhtalafu they differed. They disagreed. They did not agree with each other. And as a result of their disagreement, what happened? From in whom? So from them. From who? From the people. After the messengers. There were some who, man who, amana, he believed. Among the people, there were some who believed. Believed in what? Believed in the teachings of the prophets. Meaning, they adhered firmly to the faith. وَمِنْ هُمْ and from them مَنْ who كَفَرَ he disbelieved there was ikhtilaf some people believed they remained believers other people they disbelieved Allah says وَلَوْ and if شَاءَ اللَّهُ Allah willed مَا not اقتتلوا they fought with each other had Allah willed they would not have gone to the extent of killing each other وَلَكِنَّ but Allah Allah يَفْعَلْ he does ma whatever يُرِيدُ he wants Allah does what He wants. Yuridu from the root, ra, wa, da, irada, irada to intend. Allah does whatever He wants. Next ayah. Ya ayyuha, O alladina amanu, those who have believed, O you believers. What? Anfiqu, you all spend. Anfiqu from the root, noon fa, qaf. Nafaq. What is nafaq used for? A tunnel, a hole. That has two ends to it, two entrances, two or more. So, infaq is what? The wealth that a person has gathered, the wealth that a person has amassed, what should he do? He should make a hole in it. So that the wealth does not just stay there, rather, it goes, it is spent. Okay? So, anfiqu, you all spend, make a hole in your savings. Make a hole in your money. Make a hole in your wealth. In other words, there should be a way so that you can spend part of it. You see, through a hole, everything does not go. Through just a tiny hole, everything does not go. So there should be a hole, some way through which some of your wealth can go. Can go where? Where it is better needed. Because you will store it, you will keep it, but it's quite possible that that same wealth is needed elsewhere. It's much needed. So make a hole so that it can get there. So anfiqu, you all spend. Spend what? Mimma from that which. Meaning not all of it. Don't make such a big hole that everything goes away. But some of it, mimma from that which. Razaqnakum, we provided you. We have given you. And obviously spending over here does not mean spend, spend, spend on yourself. But rather it means spend in way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In charity, in sadaqah. رَزَقْنَاكُمْ from رَا زَيْقَافْ رِزْق Rizq is what? Provision. And Rizq is not just money. It's not just cash. Rather it refers to anything that has been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a slave. Rizq is what? Anything that Allah gives to a slave. Whether it is money, or it is time, or it is talent. Anything like that. Knowledge, food. So, mimma razaqnakum from whatever that we have provided you, give of it. Min from, meaning give it, min qabli, from before, an that yatiya it comes, before it comes. What comes? Yawmun a day. Which day is this? The day of resurrection. Or also the day of death. 
spend your wealth before this day comes to you what are the characteristics of this day first of all la not bay'un any trading fihi in it there is no trading in this day during this day you cannot do any trade you cannot do any exchange bay'un is from the root ba ya ain and bay' is exchange of goods to buy and sell to trade now we have done another word as well for buying and selling ishtira is also to buy and sell so what's the difference between the two basically both the words ishtira and bay are used for buying and selling for exchanging of goods give something in exchange for another but the difference is that some say shira or ishtira is generally used for buying only when you want to talk about buying when you want to talk about preferring one thing over the other then what word will you use ishtira ishtira is what ishtira is generally used for buying not selling but buying and bayr is generally used for selling this is one difference that linguists have given another difference has been given that they say that bay refers to taking the item taking the commodity and then giving the payment so what is it you take the thing first and then you give the payment this is what bay is like for example you go to the grocery store you take your groceries first and then you make the payment later on and ishtira refers to first you give the payment and then you take the thing it's the opposite ishtira is you give the payment first and then you take what you have bought so it depends on how you pay when you pay however they say there is a very slight difference and both can be used interchangeably so allah says on this day la bay'un fihi there is no trading in this day no commerce no one can go give something in order to free himself you cannot buy forgiveness that day you cannot buy jannah that day there is no bayer even if you give the earth spill of gold to get forgiveness no you cannot buy forgiveness la bay'un fihi wala anor khullatun any friendship no friendship is there meaning no friendship is going to be of any use is going to be of any benefit khulla is from the root kha lam lam it is said that the word khulla is from khilal and khilal is used for gap between things you may have heard of the term we have to do khilal of the fingers or men have to do khilal of the beard when they do wudu what is khilal that you pass the fingers through each other so that if in the gaps between the fingers there is any part that is left dry it becomes wet Alhamdulillah now we have you know faucets and water access that water literally falls on you so there is less chances of anything remaining dry but if you're taking water out from a jug or a container and you're the only one helping yourself and it's quite possible that some area between the fingers remains dry especially between the toes so we're taught to do khilal that the gap between the fingers go through them to make sure nothing remains dry similarly for men when they're washing their face it's quite possible that the skin that is behind their beard in their chin that remains dry so they're told to do khilal with wet fingers go through their beard so that it becomes wet from inside as well so khilal is what the gap between things or the place of entering into something okay you see the gap between fingers this is the place of entering the other fingers into that gap and the word khalla from the same root khalla yakhillu is to pierce to slit to make a hole through something so khulla to summarize what is khulla then khulla is friendship that enters into the heart and settles there it takes a deep position in the heart it settles in the heart friendship enters the heart it makes a hole through the heart and it stays in the heart it does not leave deeply rooted friendship firm friendship deep friendship and it said that khulla is more than mahabba it is more than love because it's not just love but it is friendship 
this airport he says to his beloved that قَدْ تَخَلَّلْتِ مَسْلَكَ الرُّوحِ مِنِّي that you have entered in me like the spirit in a body قَدْ تَخَلَّلْتِ he uses the same word that you have entered into me your love has entered into me just as the soul has entered in the body when the soul and body are separated can the body survive anymore it cannot so similarly your love has entered into me the khallalti and has settled deeply within me that now it cannot be separated from me and he says wa bi da summi al khalilu khalila and this is why a friend is called a friend a khalil is called a khalil because the khalil his friendship is deeply settled in your heart so when allah says wala khullatun and there is no khulla imagine your closest best friend imagine you're such a friend with whom you have very deep friendship at whose level nobody else is this is what khalil is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called ibrahim alayhi salam his khalil wa takhadha allah ibrahim khalila and only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be one's khalil We cannot have human beings as our khalil. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said about Abu Bakr that لو كنت متخدا من أمتي خليلا if I were to take from my ummah a khalil لا تخذت أبا بكر I would have taken Abu Bakr as my khalil. But because Allah subhanahu wa taala only can be khalil, that is what the proper etiquette is that only we should have Allah at that level in our hearts. This is why. Abu Bakr will only be my habib and not my khalil okay and it is also said that the word khulla is from khala waw from khala yakhlu which means to be empty wa ila khalaw when they are alone so this is why khalil or khulla is special love special friendship at the level of which no one else is only that friend is at that level no one else is at that level So such exclusive love, such exclusive deep friendship should only be for who? Should only be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَّدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ So Allah says, وَلَا خُلَّهِ And nor any خُلَّهِ Any deep friendship, deepest friendship that you have with someone at the level of which no one else is, even such a person cannot help you that day. ولا النور شفاعة any intercession شفاعة from the root شين فاعين شف what does شف mean even either part of a pair and شفاعة is so called because one joins the other to intercede for him to plead for him to request for him so no شفاعة is going to be of use either on that day this is why spend and do something for yourselves. Wal kafiruna and those who disbelieve, those who deny, meaning those who disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa taala, and as a result of which do not do what Allah has imposed on people, whom they are azalimun, those who are unjust. How are they zalim? Because they are not respecting Allah subhanahu wa taala's commands. Zalim is what? To place something where it does not belong, and kufr is disrespect towards Allah's commands. Allah is telling you to believe in him Allah is telling you to do certain things and you don't care about it you don't do it so this is zulm you're placing Allah's commands where they should not be so wal kafiruna hum zalimun meaning such people will be in trouble on that day let's listen to the recitation of these verses till